yea, the deep things of God. So we are to be holy as he is holy. And he says, now this is 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10, now verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of God, save the spirit of man, which is in him, his divine nature living within us, his holy nature. Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but by the spirit of God. You must be born again, or you will never know this truth. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Verse 13, 1 Corinthians 2. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. We cannot interpret this book, but we can interpret it by going through this book. He has things written two or three different times that are very important. And then verse 14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for their foolishness unto you. You see, we try to lead someone to Christ. These are foolishness to them until they are born again. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Now, we must get back to the Bible, the Word of God. We must get back to this book, to study this book. We must teach the second coming of Christ, which we may get into this week, but we may not get into it until next week. We must get people under the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, his crucifixion atones our sins. His resurrection eradicates those sins. So we must believe in the virgin birth we must believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and we must give this out to the whole world. You see, we must repent and believe. This gives us the Holy Spirit. This is, gives us, the Holy Spirit gives us this new principle of life within us. Moment by moment, we believe we are baptized by the Holy Spirit of God and indwelt by the third person of the Trinity. We are new people. We're never the same. Now, I want you to listen at what this means to you as a person that is seeking God. And when you are born again, the spiritual growth and enjoyment are impossible apart from meditation in the Word of God and obedience to it. We must be separate from the world. This means we are sanctified. We are born again. We are born again the Spirit of God is dwelling within us, and the Word of God must be our daily food. Being in Christ, risen with Him, now this is in Colossians 3, seated with Him in the heavenly places, we can look upon the enemy as conquered. Oh, I, this is the best lessons that we're going to have. That he has already given us victory. Satan is already defeated. This is the most important lessons you're ever going to learn. The first thing the Holy Spirit does when he comes in is to take up residence within the spirit of man is to establish again the absolute standards of righteousness.
righteousness within the moral conscience, which reflect the very nature and character of God. The very nature and character of God. So sanctification is Christ in you. This is the impartation of the character of Jesus Christ. The holy qualities of him. His patience, his love, his holiness, his faith, his purity, his godliness. That is manifested in and through every sanctified soul. 2 Thessalonians 2. Now, once you know these, you will never see the world as a place of joy. Never see the world as a place of joy. Our joy and peace is in Christ, not in the world. 2 Thessalonians 2.13, here's, here's what he says. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. Brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification. I'm one with him of the spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. But now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through faith, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. We cannot live like the world. We cannot act like the world. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we desire to be holy as thou art holy. We desire to do thy perfect will, presenting our bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to thee, which is thy reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be renewed by the spirit of our mind that we may know thy perfect and acceptable will of God. Deliver us from this awful enemy today. The Lord rebuke this enemy. And thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. So we thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. Thank thee for forgiveness of sin. And we thank thee for the word of God. And we're rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit today. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen. So as we see how holy that God is, God cannot look upon sin. So we are to hate sin with a passion. We're to hate sin as he hates sin. So we see, we saw last week that when Adam sinned against God, he lost his spiritual faculties and became dead spiritually to God and his spirit. So it is not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, I read this last week, but the Spirit of God is standing at the door trying to get in, and your will keeps him from coming in. But it's God's will that you receive Christ today. There's never any time to wait. Never any time to wait. So it is not enough that the Holy Spirit should take up his residence in the spirit of man. He must have access to the soul and body. Not until then can a man become dedicated for consecration is conditioned on a spirit, feel, soul, and body. A healthy soul and body needs a healthy body. And if that body, everybody that's listening, if you're a child of God, this is what your life is right now. If your body is given over to carnality and lust of the flesh, 
the soul and spirit suffer, and the whole man becomes spiritually sick. This is what's wrong with the world today because we are to live a Christ-like life. It's not us that liveth anymore, but Christ that liveth through us and the life which we now live. We live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. So we saw that Adam, this brought death upon the body and the soul when he sinned. Man lost his perfection in every realm and until he's willing to become alive to Christ and his spirit, he shall abide in eternal death. You will be in a place called hell where the worm never dies, crawling all over your body and maggots and you will be there for eternity. This is why we must give this out to the young people today to see that this is the only life that should be lived, that others may see Christ manifested in their life. Only that which is a trinity is capable of fellowship with the Godhead, the triune Godhead. So when man sinned and fell and broke fellowship with God, this image of the Almighty was destroyed and he ceased to be a trinity. He has a soul and a body, but no spirit. This is why today we are looking for the rapture. We are looking for the rapture. So what is the rapture and when is it going to take place? Now we must know these things because Christ taught us these truths that we are to look forward for the rapture to come. What is the rapture? The rapture is a transformation into the image of him who was transformed after us. The rapture is the fulfillment a Bible prophecy. 1 John 3, 2. 1 John 3, 2. Here's what he says. Beloved, what manner of love hath the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God? Therefore the world knoweth us not, because we knew him not. Beloved, now though, after you're born again, this is you. Now listen to this. Are we the sons of God? And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. You see, before Christ went back to heaven, he showed us what was going to happen. He told us, <clears throat> In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And as he was still on the earth, he showed us what was going to happen. He gave us hope in every area of our lives. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Now this is something that you must put down and write it on your hearts. And whosoever and believeth in me shall never die. He died instead of me. Believe us thou this. So as he was taken up into heaven. Now he has left everything in this book for us. 
that we should live a worry-free life and have perfect peace. As he was being taken up into heaven, he said, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. And this Holy Spirit, which shall be in you, shall be called the Son of God. He says, we are to be witnesses unto him. This is where our power comes from. This is the power over death. Power to witness for Christ. Power to witness for Christ. This is the last thing he said before he went to heaven in Acts 1. And he does not leave you without the answer for everything that we need to know. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, this is how you are to pray that God will get this message to the ends of the world. So as he was being taken up, there were two angels stood there and said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. So he is coming back in a Shekinah glory cloud. He's coming back just like he left this earth. And if you don't know this, this is the next event that's going to happen for true believers. And then in the book of Revelation chapter 6 begins the time after we are taken up to be with the Lord. Now he says in 1 Thessalonians, where this is written, Paul wrote this to believers. And here, while we're here, we'll read 1, 2 Corinthians. And this is so important. 2 Corinthians, this is what happens to every true believer that knows Christ. 5, verse 1. For we know if this earthly house of this tabernacle was dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavenlies. And then verse 2. For in this body we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our house, which is from heaven. That's the body of light. When we reach the speed of light, we are going to receive a body of light. Because when he was transfigured on this earth, with Moses and with Elijah. He had a body of light that was brighter than the noonday sun. So the speed of light is 144,241 miles per second. When we reach the speed of light, we're going to receive a body of light. This is what he has for every true believer. But if you're left on this earth during the tribulation period, when the Antichrist is going to be reigning, your heads will be cut off if you don't worship the devil. This is the true facts about the book of Revelation for those that do not know Christ. So first, Thessalonians, he says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep, or that he's talking about the ones that go Take your last breath, you're in the presence of the Lord, and Jesus will bring with him, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which, which were asleep. For the Lord himself, now he says to comfort one another with these words. So we must know these truths. For the Lord himself, now this could happen at any time. This is the true words of God. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the dead in Christ shall rise first. You see, we're going to hear his voice. We're going to hear the trumpet sound. 
and he's coming in a cloud exactly the way he went back to heaven. And those that have died, their bodies have gone back to dust, are going to be raised first. And this is what the rapture is all about. This is necessary for us to know that we are going to receive a body. He, it, we are the body of Christ and he's the head, so we must be united. And flesh and blood cannot enter heaven. We have to have a new body. So why is the rapture necessary? For the initiation of the casting out of Satan from heaven. And that's in Revelation 10, 12, 10. We know why is the rapture necessary to allow the Antichrist to be revealed after we're taken out of this life. This all has to happen. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7, the mystery of iniquity can never fully develop its work of darkness as long as there is one spark of light present on this earth. Then shall the wicked one be revealed because we're the light of the world. We're the light of the world. So here we see the rapture is necessary for this awful climax of evil to be fulfilled. Why is the rapture of the church necessary? Because the word of God must be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Only then is the body united with the head who is the fullness of the Godhead. You see, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. There's only one way to get to heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ. Why is the rapture necessary? So that we can come back and judge the world. This is who will be in the rapture, what we're talking about. Every one of us today that knows Jesus Christ as Savior born again by the Spirit of God. Now, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. It could be at any moment we could be raptured to be with the Lord. And we could go to heaven this moment. We could meet him in the clouds. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We, this is what we are to be doing. You have to know these truths. The body overcomes the new body, the gravitational pull, time, space, and matter. We put on the covering of light. The new body has no lungs, no atmosphere. We are leaving the atmosphere. No air, no flesh, or blood can inherit the kingdom of God. Blood has oxygen. There is no liver and no kidney. So here we see he is what every person needs to not have fear of the coming things on the earth. People's hearts are failing for fear for the things coming on the earth, and fear has torment. So we have the hope of being taken out of this evil place, going into his presence, and living with him forever in perfect peace and righteousness. Satan has a place called hell for those that reject Christ. And it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We're being going to be in a place of light. In hell, it's all darkness. The blackness of darkness forever. The gnashing of teeth and fire and brimstone. And we know that in the book of Revelation, the first people that are cast into this place is the prophet 
and the false be the false prophet and the beast. Satan is cast in there a thousand years later after we are in spending a thousand year reign with Christ on this earth. Because he was the prophet in the Old Testament that was to come. He's our great high priest today, and he's going to reign as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then we will have perfect peace. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because we trust in thee. You see, friends and loved ones depart, but he will never leave us. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me.